So I gotta aim just carefully. I'm gonna drink some tea because I got some green tea on standby. It's helpful for my commentating purposes because I like it. It's better than an energy drink to be honest because, you know, even though I like the energy drinks, I'm whispering my hopes and dreams to you, the lizard, of drinking my tea because it's good stuff. I like it. I like it. If only c I, I got him. I got him. I knew green tea would lead me to success. I always dream. I always hope. Uh, this has been an awkward part to start off on. Talking about my exception. My, my exception. My obsession with tea. I'm apparently salivating because, you know, I got some tea. It's delicious. I love it. Sure, I drink the energy drinks from time to time, but I've been trying to cut back severely, you know, because it's not good. Energy drinks, no. Nah. Anyways, point is tea. I like tea. I, I used to do counseling. Uh, the counselor was like, hey, you ever try green tea? You should switch to it. It's better for you. Uh, but point is, you know, that aside, I got a little bit of exploration. I got a lizard. Got him. Got his tail. Got a stamina increment. I got to go get some fruit. I got to get some fruit because uh, f health increment. Health increment. I gotta extend that life bar, you know, survivability is important. Speaking of fruit, I, I like fruit. Fruit is delicious. I don't care what anyone says. I mean, maybe I haven't talked about it, but, you know, I like fruit for lunch. I like it for breakfast. I, I eat a lot for breakfast. Um, I like it for lunch, although I don't really eat lunch on a normal basis. Lunch is kind of an every other day sort of situation. Sure, you're supposed to have three meals a day, but I don't always do the three meals a day because, uh, I don't know, I, as an adult, I find I'm not as hungry as I used to be. As a kid, you know, you got the growing and stuff, but as, as an adult, you're kind of like, eh, I don't, I'm not really hungry. I'm not really hungry. I'm a big guy. I kind of sustain my own weight. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not hungry. Dinner, though. Oh, dinner. Dinner is delicious. Oh, I could go on forever about dinner. Seriously, though. Breakfast and dinner. What else do I need? The occasional lunch, I guess. I don't know. Depends how long I've been up. Days kind of are very subjective to change. Uh, some, I don't know. I have a very erratic sleeping schedule, so it doesn't always work out as well as I plan. Plus, I work nights, so it's kind of, it's kind of hard to maintain a normal schedule but i've been doing pretty good for the va for the past like three days so i don't really know what else to say uh my own problems aside welcome to shadow of the colossus i haven't really introduced it we've been exploring but here's the proper place and thing of the colossus now i'm an idiot i do things very stupidly you shouldn't really do this but I wanted to speed up gameplay because, let's be honest, no one needs me to walk down the normal path to this whole little pit. But the normal way is to climb down that little pathway. You see the zigzagging pathway? You do that, you get down here, and then you go to the Colossus, which is kind of interesting, to be honest. I like this guy. It's pretty different from the norm that you expect when you're going up against your next Colossus, because you're like, they're big and epic and huge and intimidating, and sometimes there's puzzle elements. Sometimes it's pretty obvious, but you got to figure out a pathway. So, you know, it's a little puzzly. Actually, I gotta be honest, it's still pretty puzzly regardless of what you got. It, I mean, it, stuff, things. Sometimes there's an ad challenge that's unintentional, but I digress. You know, no one cares about that. What we got going on here is a Keeper of the Flame. Or at least that's what Dormin said. Or is it Dormin? Oh yeah, this guy. He's he's a lot smaller than what you expect, but he's very ferocious, butts into you a lot, just rams right into you. Um kinda reminds me of like a tiger, like I don't know. Eh, tiger. Tiger's pretty accurate, you know, he's very big cat like. He's definitely got the claws and he'll swipe at you, but for the most part he just rams into you. He's he does that a lot. He, he roars a bit, you know, it sounds kind of cat-like. Big... 
Now, the whole point of everything is you climb onto one of these little altar things with the flames and then you knock out a stick and then you go kind of Ico-like with grabbing the plank. Try to avoid getting rammed into. He'll do that. It's annoying. What am I supposed to do about it? Anyways, no one cares. The point is, you grab it, you climb back onto the altar, and then you you relight it because it kind the flame kind of goes out just just a little bit. You know, it's not it's not a permanent thing that happens. You know, sure you knock it out and it's still on fire a little bit, but it's go the flame is gonna go out. So you just relight it, much like you did in Nico, and then you know, like the, the keeper of the flame is terrified by what he keeps, I guess. Something along those lines. Point is, you just edge him ever so closely to the ledge. That That's what we got going on. It's a necessity. Hopefully the flame doesn't go out. I don't think it does. Point is, I don't have any issues with it. And when all is said and done, you go straight to his back. Back where his glyph is exposed. Now the problem is trying to grab onto him, trying to get a good method going. But I don't really have an issue. Somehow I glitched onto his back and all I gotta do is position myself. Little complicated simply because, you know, he, he, he wiggles around a lot. He moves around a lot. It's hard to get a position to stab him ever so slightly. But if you try sometimes, you might find you get an opening. Or at least that's the idea. I mean, sometimes I like to stab him ever so slightly. Timing is kind of key. Uh, also, the fact that I've increased my stamina significantly doesn't hurt a bit. Doesn't hurt a bit. But yeah, the real challenge is actually trying to get a good handle onto this guy. But I'm, I, I just keep with it, man. Just keep with it. You can you can find an opening. You can do it ever so slightly. You just gotta. Be very patient. It's sort of hard when you're doing Let's Play, but that, that is the key right here. Patience. And, and I don't know, just finding an opening. Otherwise, I mean, it, it's a rodeo. This is like everything I'd expect when it comes to a rodeo. But I mean, like, other than that, I mean, like, hey, this guy, he, he's like, he, he deserves it. He ran into me a little bit. It wasn't fun. It was kind of painful. <laughs> Do I feel bad? I feel bad. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Here I was like, I don't, I don't feel sorry. No, I feel sorry. It was a tiger thing, and I killed it. <laughs> and I like tigers. They're adorable, and and they're yeah, they're ferocious. But they're like the largest ca big cat ever. And I mean that thing was very tiger-like in a lot of ways. Oh no! The kill has already built up inside. What am I to do? Also, uh, that was number 11. I wasn't ready for that. I mean, sure. A lot of these things are kind of adding up. And, uh, and like, sure, we're like, we got five left. But at the same time, I don't know if I can make it.
Oh, number 12 with the thunder and the high ground and oh, it's not what you expect. Not at all. Hell, I, I gotta be honest, even when I did the practice run, there was more to this. But, you know, point is, we'll, we'll get to that in a second, you know. We'll get to that in the next part. I'm lamenting over here because, you know, number, number 11, number 11 hit me in the heart, you know, because I like tigers. That thing had a lot of big cat feline traits to it. And it was like, I don't know, it, it had a little bit of a roar to it, much like a big cat. And the Lion King used tigers as, as the roars. And uh, I don't know why I got, my brain is going all over the place with lament. It's all adding up, viewers. I feel like I need to pour a 40 out just for my, for my fallen... Uh, opponents I feel like that's something I need to do I can't help it I'm I might need a break but point is you know, I'm, I'm still going with this I'm I, it's still the exploration part also be careful on these narrow ledges your horse gets a little turned around he's a silly pony I can't deny it he's got a little trait he's got some traits some tropes some things some traveling things that just kind of are silly Controls very walkily at times. Also, Sage Shrine. Not gonna lie, everyone knows what we're going there for. There's no denying it. I mean, sure, I could say, hey, I, I'm gonna pass up on this. What are you insane? I'm not passing up on jack shit. If it's free shit, I'm getting it. If it's power up, I'm getting it. If it's an increment in my stats, I'm getting it. I mean, I need it. I need to distract my mind from the horrible atrocities I do. Even though, I mean, like, that's the gameplay. I feel sad. Let's be honest. If you had a giant, if you had a giant Wongus that's just, like, lumbering around, acting all peaceful, like, I mean, sure. My first instinct is I want to befriend it, but my second instinct is what if I go close to it and then it tries to kill me. Likewise, these Colossus, they're, they're very animalistic in their own rights, you know, very primal in a lot of ways. They act like a giant animal, like some sort of giant species. And if it was, if it was something that I could actually like harness the power of and like actually get to observe and research and possibly befriend, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe imprint some sort of like relationship uh, upon it so that it wouldn't act so hostile towards me, I'd do it. Because, I mean, it sounds like something that would be amazing. You know, riding on top of your giant flying water falcor. Or, like, um, riding on top of a giant quadrupedal horse thing. Or, like, a giant turtle thing. Or, I mean, like, all these things that kind of look like they're based on something. Or a giant minotaur thing with a lust for power. I mean, let's be honest. It sounds pretty dope. Being able to befriend something large and in charge and trying to protect you. I'll be honest, I mean, oh, that's kind of what I dream about. That's kind of what I hope for. And some of you might be thinking, well, Gildum, there, there's like a third game. There's like a lot of befriending. There's a lot of awesomeness, but it didn't get a lot of high reviews. But uh, viewers, I'm aware there is The Last Guardian. And yes, I'm aware something about it is pretty amazing it's pretty pretty interesting in my opinion maybe i have plans for it and by maybe i totally do but you know that's neither here nor there well okay it's actually quite there but point is i'm i'm on the pathway i'm close there's a lizard at hand like i said there's a lizard at hand if i'm not careful i could have fallen to my doom i could have fallen off the cliff that's something you gotta be careful with jumping off your horse. Point is, I got a lizard right here. You wouldn't expect it. It's right on the path. It's right there, out in the open. You just gotta edge ever so carefully. I'm in a bad angle, but if I try sometimes, I might just find it climbs onto the wall. And when it climbs onto the wall, I can hunt it ever so slightly. Not really sniping, although the word comes to mind. Point is, if you're ever so careful, you might find uh, I, I, I can do it. I can't do it. I hear I was thinking I can't. <laughs> Always foolhardy. Just use your sword 
stab it, and then save. I might have said that a little weird, but you know, point is, I, I did it. This is another part. It's done. Yeah.